Welcome back to the Flix Forum podcast with Jesse Heater and MJ. This week we are looking at Netflix's 31st film, the 2017 romantic science fiction film The Discovery. It's directed by Charlie McDowell, it stars Jason Siegel, Rooney Mara, Jesse Plemons, Riley Keough, and Robert Redford. Hello. Romantic sci-fi. Romantic sci-fi. Boys. That's actually bang on. I'll give it that. Yeah. I think yeah. they've done well there. I think you can obviously slip the drama uh, genre in there at some point. But Probably, yeah. I think that kind of works, romantic sci-fi. Very good. So, we always kick off our show with a quick little summary of our thoughts of the film. MJ, <laughs> go for it. This is quite wordy, so please bear with me. Mm. Um, on the surface, this film is about the idea that a scientist has proved that some form of afterlife exists. As a result of this discovery, people start taking their own lives, a one-way ticket to the afterlife. On closer inspection, this story is about the idea of finding connection with others, your place in the world, and experience all the emotions that a human being is supposed to experience in life. And that's the real discovery. Mm. Touching. Oh, deep. I think, yeah, well, I, yeah, wow. I didn't even know I got that deep. That's very deep. Very deep. Well all right, Peter. All right, mine is not as deep as that. <laughs> In the near future, a scientist proves that there is an afterlife. Two years on from this discovery, with the suicide rate rapidly increasing, he's now trying to explore it further, which coincides with his estranged son returning home in the hope of getting his father to put a stop to it all. Yes, very true. I said the discovery of an afterlife leads to an outbreak of suicides. Is this really possible? That's what Will wants to work out. Mm. Good. Is it really possible? Hmm. Hmm. All right. So we always uh, have a look at some film history, anything that we've learnt about the development, pre-production, post-production, production. Peter, your favourite topic. <laughs> I'm just going to say that every week now. <sighs> oh, I feel like I, I keep going with the same one, but we're back to the Sundance Film Festival for this one. We are. So premiered, yeah, the Sundance on Jan 20. Released on March 31 on Netflix afterwards. It did have a cinematic debut in America before that. They they uh, did a release on the 20th of March on Rhode Island in Newport where they actually filmed it. So they did like an opening So night. just on Rhode Island? Just on Rhode okay. Island, yeah. Yeah. Okay. That's where it was all filmed, wasn't it? Yeah. So, yeah. yeah. It was shot in 25 days as well. Yeah. Pretty short. I can Pretty... see that. Yeah. It was all kind of beautiful. Condensed Not a lot of locations area. yet. Yeah. So the director was direct. His girlfriend's Rooney Mara. Yep. Yeah, and his mother was his, in the film as well. Yeah, yeah his, his mother was in it. So just a big family affair. <laughs> he's Malcolm McDowell's son. Ah. Yeah. Wow. Oh. Yeah. Didn't that, I didn't? Yeah, didn't, and didn't pick that. He's a step, like stepson yeah. of Ted Danson. Oh, wow. So obviously his mum remarried Ted. Yeah. Danson. And oh. Ted Danson was in his last movie. Malcolm um, McDowell. Yeah. So he was born to be in film. Yeah, he yeah. was. So his last... He's done, or, he's, he's done a couple of things. Oh, sorry. sorry. Yeah. His, probably his biggest film is The One I Love with Elizabeth, Elizabeth Moss and Mark Duplass. Um, mm. Similar sorts of themes to this. I believe yeah, so. It's, uh, it's about a relationship yeah. and like a, I think like a marriage. I've not seen it. But, we uh, like Mark Duplass, don't we? We do, yeah. <laughs> I'm keen to see that film, The One I Love. Yeah, I've, I've put it on my watch list ever mm. since all this. 7.1 out of 10 on IMDb. Ooh, from 31,000 rating so it's a good one people have seen it and people liked mm. it so. it's done a bit of Silicon Valley as well yeah I saw yeah. that as well yeah. the film though originally um, it was originally written to take place in like a sleepy little rural rural sort of town mm. and then uh, Charlie McDowell they rewrote it because they found the location and they fell in love with the visuals of the area and I thought the yeah. visuals of the film were really oh, good oh they were really good yeah. Yeah. And I think it, it worked changes. really well the fact that it was on it had to be on water, water. Like, I, can't, I can't imagine it not being on water now but also, it felt they felt separated from the rest of the world as well. Yeah. Like making a point and of taking that ferry, ferry across. To get there, yeah, like, yeah. I'm, I'm not sure how one of those things happen if it's if it's in rural and you don't have that water aspect. I like the fact that so um, Justin Later, who wrote the film with um, Charlie McDowell, so they've worked together the, the pair of them as well. Mm. And after they finished the one I love. He's like, I've got this idea from the film. And Charlie McDowell's like, dude, like, we just finished this one. Like, we just <laughs> finished it. He goes, no, no, I know, but I just want you to answer this question. What if the afterlife was scientifically proven and how would humans react? <laughs> and they're just like... <laughs> <laughs> and they're just like, they were just straight away just started writing it. And I, I could totally understand how that notion... I love it when there's a film that 
thinks about this this idea that no one's ever thought of and you're like, oh my gosh, yeah. what would happen in that sense? Yeah. And it, it's it's such like I don't know, you call it like it's I don't want to say common thing, but it's just like so obvious it could be like a movie or something. Like it it's this thing that's kind world. of like everywhere, yeah, like, oh my god, there's finally actually someone's actually finally doing it. Hmm. Mm. Had a, one of our, I think it's one of our first ones where someone's been replaced on a movie. I think that was maybe on the International Assassin or was the... Uh, the Dory Yeah, no, no the, the, the Kevin James one, someone pulled out. But, um, yeah, so, so Nicholas Holt was cast for the lead role, but had to drop out and Jason Segel replaced him. It's a really different film. Really different. I'm really glad that went that way because I, I thought Jason Segel was really good in this. I, I can't imagine Nicholas Holt as that I can main guy. S- see it. It would be okay. Very He's different. different though, yeah. It was. It's I mean, a different film. I mean, Nicholas Holt's obviously been, been in a lot of stuff. Uh, for me, the, the, the main one I think Nicholas Holt straight away is Mad Max Fury Road as Nux, and I'm like, oh. But that's a, yeah. A, oh, obviously, it's completely different. different. <laughs> I, I guess also, <laughs> as I, I found this out after after watching the movie, and I'm like, no, nah, I really like Jason Segel in this movie. I'm really glad there wasn't Nicholas Holt and Rooney Mara feel like a better pairing, though. I I do agree with that. I mean, we'll talk, I didn't really like the pairing of mm. Rooney Mara and Jason Segel. Was, but yeah, that actually now you say that, yeah, that that pairing makes a lot more sense. Now. I was thinking you could have almost had Leo DiCaprio. Like a Shutter Island type performance. <laughs> Shutter Island, it's, it's too much like Shutter Island, then, isn't it? Like, <laughs> Leonardo DiCaprio would have been huge. Yeah, <laughs> I, I, mean, I mean, if you're getting Robert Redford for a movie yeah, for a right. Netflix movie, like, surely Leo's going to do one soon. <laughs> so I was reading about that as well. So the director obviously put Charlie McDowell obviously put it out to agencies or whatever, mm. and someone mentioned that. Robert Redford had was was available during this period, and he's yeah. like, dude, like Robert Redford's not going to do this yeah. film. And he met with him, and Robert Redford's like, you would be so surprised at how many people just think that I wouldn't do things or I'm not around for things. They just don't even ask me. So he's he just doesn't even get asked. So he yeah. read the script, he liked it, he read, and he's like, yeah, I'll do it. And he's like, I, oh how do God. I have Robert Redford? <laughs> I've got Robert Redford doing a movie. You're like, oh my, he's God. retired now, though, isn't he? Isn't he? Yeah, he's retired. Now. <laughs> yes. you know, like, but do you ever retire? He's, he's, like, he's amazing though. <laughs> so um, Jesse Plemons was Toby, the yep, brother, the and the song that he sang called "Hey Lacey" about the character Lacey oh, on yeah. Italia, He mm-hmm. wrote that himself and performed it himself. <laughs> he wrote a second song as well yeah. that was in there. Yeah, he, wrote, he, he sang two of his own songs in the movie. <laughs> Is it the post credit scene? Did you see the post credit scene? I did see the post credit. I'd like to oh, talk like, about that a bit later on. Okay. Yeah. yeah. Um, Jesse Plemons is an awesome actor. He is. This is a small role for him. Fantastic. Awesome. Has anyone seen the uh, Black Mirror episode where he plays yes, the I captain have. of the... Yes, I have. I haven't. Oh, right. So he was so good in that. Really so good, good in that. Uh, the other thing I had was the mansion, that big mansion that they filmed <laughs> in. That's the mansion that they used uh, for the Dark Shadows TV show, the Collinwood... Colin, yeah. No, G. The Collinwood mansion. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> show <Showpies. laughs> <laughs> Anything else? Um, I don't want to steal your thunder, but I saw a product placement. Yes. I did too. Good. Yeah. I assume it was the same one. Apple? The, the iPad? Yep. <laughs> and the MacBook. Yeah, yeah. I, I didn't notice the MacBook. I know. He got I, I the MacBook the iPad. out while he had the thing. Yeah. Straight away I thought of you and went, oh, there, there's the Apple logo. <laughs> <I go>, Jesse. <laughs> <laughs> got it. <laughs> oh, I, there, there is no doubt you did. <laughs> <laughs> I found it interesting to read about um, why Charlie McDowell chose this to be on Netflix as well. Um, and it's an easy line to say, but his 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 thing is I've really wanted people to see it mm. um, rather than opening really small amount of locations uh, across the, I guess across across the states more than anything. People have access in the whole world to this immediately. But the other reason that he said is it's one of those movies that he thinks you should watch more than once, and the Netflix model obviously allows. perfectly allows for that. Um, and that is certainly a vibe that I got from this film. I can vouch for that. You watched it twice. I didn't put it on Weatherbox, so I didn't want to tell you guys. I watched this twice. Did you? Yeah. yeah. So I finished watching it, and I'm like, I want to watch it again. I watched this. Yeah. So, so <laughs> that in my, I, I, I watched watch this. <laughs> I watched this a week ago, and then two nights later, I watched it again. Nice. I watched it twice. Well, there you go. The this Netflix is, model. It's the first movie that we've done that I watched twice. <laughs> yeah. You Good. Watched Brahman Nam twice. I thought you were going. Oh, I, I thought about it. Sure. It's, it's still on my list. Surely you watched the first ten minutes of Fundamental. Fundamental. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sure you. Oh have. no no no! I'll, 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 I'll watch this again before I do that for you, Jesse. <laughs> but no, I, I can absolutely say that this holds up the second time. Well, whether it holds up, it, I think you would watch it. I would watch it so differently. Well, I. 
I had to because I felt like oh, talking about a bit. I, I was I was into this movie, and so I, I, kind of, I kind of finished watching this movie, and I was like, oh, that was great. I don't have any notes on it because I was just so into watching it. I'm, I'm, I'm going to watch it again so I can write my notes while I'm watching. And I, yeah, I, I really enjoyed it the second time around as well. Well, like, well, I just before we, like, we can talk about the critical consensus. Well, well, so I think we sorry, do because we're, what, we're what talking I was, about by the sounds of it, we all enjoyed this. Yeah, absolutely. What, what, what I was going to ask actually before she was saying because why I put it on Netflix so I can see it. Have you have you heard of this movie before? Never. I never heard of it, but a lot of people had seen this movie. Like, based I, I on, remember when it was released. Yeah, oh, I'd never heard of it, but based on all the ratings on all kind of you know Letterbox and IMDb and stuff, a lot of people had seen this movie. It's big push. Yeah, I'm pretty sure Netflix put a lot behind it when okay. it came out on their yeah. on their platforms. Well, at twenty four thousand ratings on IMDb. Mm. I feel like our view of how many ratings are on IMDb is skewed by the fact that we've. We look at so many small Netflix films as well. Yeah. So we look at twenty four thousand, and we're like, "That's huge." Some are under a thousand. <laughs> yeah. Oh yeah, exactly. Yeah. In context of that, it's mm. big. But in context of, oh, not like the big studio movie. What to all the to all the boys I loved before had sixty or something. Ah, uh, yeah, not sure. I can't remember. Yeah. The top of that. But so it's yeah. We didn't. So Wetterbox had almost twelve thousand. Yeah. Yeah. So Wetterbox was three out of five, and IMDb was six point three out of ten. So both sitting around that kind of six middle of the road. Of 10. Yeah. But then you look at the audience score on Rotten Tomatoes, 44% yeah. from 1,200. From 1,200. And, and even the, the critics score on Rotten Tomatoes was 45% from 60 reviews. 60, 60 reviews is quite high considering some of the ones we've looked at as well. <laughs> well, I think they're all wrong. Oh, yeah. I'm, 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 quite, I'm quite surprised by that. I, I like this movie. Obviously, that, you two guys like this movie as well. The reason like, that I wanted to watch it again was the direction of the film at the start initially confused me and I reckon I actually battled through the first 20 minutes of this film okay um, I was initially trying to follow a storyline of like the impact of this discovery on the world and how the world was intending to deal with it um, and I reckon about the 40 minute mark when I realised that that wasn't the story that I was trying to tell and it was a lot more insular and it was a lot more philosophical and it was a lot more of a character driven piece with um, Jason Segel's character and Rooney Mara's character that's when I was like all in. By I said the forty minute mark, I was all in, um, and I enjoyed the the sort of reliability and the, the the conversations and the depths of the conversations that they were having, mm-hmm. and that was the best part about this film for me. That's why I want to watch it again because I'm I'm watching the first twenty minutes, ignoring yeah, it, okay. not even thinking about See, that. Because I think the first twenty minutes is a good setup for what comes on later. So I reckon you'll probably pick up on if you watch it a second time, you'll probably pick up on more or like on that I character d- side I definitely things, rather yeah. than yeah. So I, I I'll, I'll, I'll differ to you in that I was in from the start, so I, I really liked that kind of first time where it was about kind of like oh you know the afterlife and the effects and things like that. I, I was all in from the very start of this movie. So I was I was crazy. I was in on that, yeah. but that wasn't what the film was about. So the first scene was awesome where mm. the guy shoots himself. Oh, it's fantastic. I, I, yeah, I love it when, it, when a scene, mm. sorry, when a movie is like not screwing around with you and mm. straight into it. And we've mm. seen that with, actually with a few of our films. And, but I was really following that idea that this is going to be a, a scale thing. Mm. And, and when that wasn't happening, I was like, why are you showing me this weird conversation between Jason Siegel and, and Rooney Mara on a, on a ferry, mm. which with like very little chemistry, um, mm. I'm like, why am I seeing this? This is this is taking away from what the film's about. I'm like, no, no, you idiot. Like, that's what the film's about. So mm. that's why I want to watch it again. All right. So let's talk about some characters. Let's have a little bit of look at the look at the characters. In general, the characters in this film are really, really sad people. All <laughs> no, they all they all are. And I guess you're living yeah. in a world where everyone's uh, you know, sorry. A lot of people are committing suicide. Yeah. But there was just this uh, this and. They did it really well with the way the shot, the, the film was shot with this sort of grayscale almost through the whole film. Yep. Um, in a really kind of sleepy town and mm. dreary weather, but it was just really everyone was really, really set sad. the tone well, kind of yeah, the the weather kind yeah. of and shooting really set the tone for that. Like Will, so Jason Segel, main character, deje- he's dejected, he's depressed, he mm. just feels worn out mm. and almost like he doesn't care anymore. And Segel played that character really well. He did yeah. really believed it from him I was really good I liked the whole idea of the plot device being this discovery and the afterlife but it was also the discovery of Will like it was a discovery for yeah. as a character as well so I really liked his character and Isla I, th- I thought Isla's job or the, the, the role of her character was to constantly keep him in check and like make sure you know do you ever get out of your head get out of your yeah. head for a minute and let's live let's I, work out what's going on I wasn't a big fan of Isla's character I, I wanted more 
maybe more backstory, just more from her. I'm not sure what I want more, but yeah, I mean, compared to, I really liked Will and uh, I really liked Toby and that, but I just, I was character that just left me wanting more. She's arguably more important than Will as like the key driver of this film because mm-hmm. all of Will's actions are to do with Isla yeah. and it focuses around Isla. Um, and she's obviously super guarded, but she's empty because obviously she's lost her son, which you don't know until partway through well, the film. And then, through, yeah. then you really learn more and more about it as time goes on. But mm. her n- nothing to lose kind of attitude compared to Will's just dejected and mm. not, not even wanting to participate in anything attitude is a mm. really nice pairing for the two of them. And, and they both bring out good in each other that they couldn't have done if they were any more similar, I guess. Mm. I, I didn't like Toby. I, he was... I thought he was this dropkick brother. I could how have, dare you? But he, he could have been played by anyone, and you've got Jesse Plemons. I, th- I thought the yeah. exact same thing. I'm like, he's an amazing Jesse actor. You could have this. had... You know, didn't give him any room to work. Like, you could have... Like, maybe that's more a casting thing rather than a character thing, but I thought his character could have been played by anyone. It was, it was a nothing character. Oh, yeah, I would have said a nothing character, but Jesse Plemons is such a good actor, I thought he made the character good. From what? So I think, what was the character to you? Um, the the comic relief in a sad movie. Okay, I I, I really enjoyed um, Jesse Plemons and Jason Segel's scenes together. I thought they had great dialogue and like from the the car ride the, the car ride in and a lot of the scenes of the house. I really liked that and a lot of the time, you know, yeah, Jesse Plemons is you know that dumb sort of character even at the morgue. Um, yeah, he, he's kind of a nothing character, but I thought he did a great job, and he—I he, he, thought he was funny. I thought he, he in a very I said sad, depressed movie. I thought he provided some great comic relief. And I just love watching Jesse Plemons on screen. Maybe there's, I just didn't feel like uh, there was a few parts throughout the film where the comedic stuff just didn't. I, I, didn't can, hit. I can completely understand what you're saying. Yeah, I absolutely can 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 see your point of view, but I I, I did 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 like him. But also, I probably do have a tendency. If I like an actor, I like their character. You really do. So I really, I really, <laughs> yeah. like, I, I, I really like Jesse Plemons. Yeah. Um, and so I really enjoyed watching him on screen. He was, um, he was one of the few kind of realists in the film. So he, he mm. did understand everything that was going on from all angles. He did. So he, he, he understood the the need that their dad had to continue to experiment and why he was mm. doing it. He also understood. Will's way of being like you got to stop doing this you're causing a lot of damage mm. but he wasn't headstrong either way to do anything about it yeah and that was I think and I think the Jesse Plemons factor actually threw me because he is such a good actor I was like nah nah there's got to be more to this character or something's going to come up where he's going to use this knowledge that he's got because he kept mentioning like I'm not as dumb as people think I am and he yeah. said it like three or four times throughout the film and I'm like he's got some sort of something building up inside him that he wants to do something with yeah. it and he never quite did and I think Again, watching that again, probably having less of a focus on him would probably mm. be good as well. Maybe yeah. that morgue scene's his way of showing that, you know, he can do something because he managed to get yeah. there in there and get And he could, body. but I don't think there was any dispute that he could do things. Yeah. And that he wasn't. I think it's also like he's just, I feel like he was just so loyal to his father. He didn't want to go yeah. against his father. So even He didn't stray from the flow. No, he didn't. Yeah, he, he did what his father told him because of, yeah, that loyalty. His father, Thomas, Robert Redford. Robert Redford. What do we think? As a character? As we're a talking character. about the character? Yeah, as a character. He was okay. He's a sociopath, yeah? <laughs> yeah. He's basically an egomaniac. Yeah, I mean... All driven by the fact that he's grieving on his own what? guilt, yeah. basically. Yeah, on his own guilt. But he is so out of touch. <sighs> yeah, I think, I think it, it tries... I mean, the start tries to show him as good. Like, he's taken all these people in that are attempted suicide but yeah as the movie goes on you're just like hmm that first you're scene a bit, yeah you're a bit mm. so then why does he want to shut the machine down at the end when he realises what it can actually do well because because, he because, saw it, because you can't because it, he saw what he wanted to see and that was it well I think I think it's more like he also knows like hey he's gone pretty far to get this now this is just too far yeah so doesn't that show you that okay instead of going after money going after greed going after bad things that he's going to step back and so well, I, don't I, think, still, I don't think those were the things that inspired him he, no, he was, well, his inspiration was, was, was to see his wife yeah, yeah. Okay, I get that I get that and too. he saw her he did and it's almost like he just got this yeah. I mean, clarity this, of mind because he he yeah. scratched the itch that he had to scratch and there's still kind of like 
there's degrees of being you know, a psychopath or, or a bad character. Like, you know, yes, he, he did this all for his own guilt, but then if that was then to, to overflow into, hey, this would cause, you know, half the world to commit suicide to go back to relieve their regrets, that's just too much. I'm, you know, I'm quite, I'm quite selfish and a bit psycho, but I'm not that bad. So the very first scene where the cameraman shoots himself yep. and Robert Redford does this flawlessly, yeah. he doesn't care. Mm. Like it's that, that to me. Mm. That's the scene where you're just like, "Oh my god, what have I done?" He's just kind of looking at him, just like, "Why would you do that?" Sort of thing. Yes, it's also it's it does very, it really well. It's but. very common in the world they live in now. Suicide. Yeah, I guess. But I thought the camera stayed on his face to show that the emotion. Like it wasn't emotional, but it was like he's like, "Oh," like he didn't like. I thought he was surprised, but he was kind of like, "Oh," as he said, like he was mm. like, "Oh, that happened." Mm. Yeah, because. Oh, I don't know. I, I don't know. I don't even know how to explain it. Yeah. I didn't think that. I didn't think that he was a horrible person. I don't think. No, sorry. I don't think he was a bad yeah. person. But he was basically a cult leader. But, and that's what Will says. Like in some of the movie, he tells Toby that Dad is running a cult. What does he do with what's her name? Lacey. 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 When he embarrasses her in front of everyone and boots yeah. her out that's for what, no real reason. This is one of my bad scenes. That's why this guy is, he's like this, uh, like a mad scientist. Like mm-hmm. he, he's, but he's, you're seeing him progress into it yeah, more, he's, and more He's just got the, the, the big ego that, you know, yeah. I don't, sorry, I don't think he's a bad guy and was always a bad guy. Yep. I think that the, the guilt that he has with the way his wife died. Correct, yeah. And the blame he's taken from that has had a real heavy burden on him and that's why he's where he is. And do you think he wants to give other people the opportunity to fix their wrongs that they've had as well? Or is he just Does, does he entirely, no, does does he entirely so. know that that's where the afterlife takes you? I think because well, initially the end, he, just, they, he they, just proved the idea of the afterlife. Correct. Yeah, but then kind of towards the end, I think they, that they realise that the, um, that the well, I, mean, I guess when, when you die, you go back to that regret. So, But during, during the film is the very first time we see any sort of video of what the person sees when they die, Correct. But didn't wasn't that yes. because they changed the understanding of what the actual thing was? Because at the start it was um, it was just the afterlife. So he thought people kill themselves, they go to an afterlife. Whereas he was the, basically saying there is an afterlife. Correct? Yes, yeah. and that's all he was. Yeah, saying. Yeah, that's what he was saying. So he wasn't driven by the fact that they can see no, no, no. loved ones. No, no, it no, wasn't no. until Will saw that exactly. video. It was, was, was the first yeah. time that it's like, oh, I, mean, he, I think he was still trying to work out where this afterlife was and, yeah. and what this he afterlife just, he just was. Knew it but yeah, he, he, he yeah. knew there was an afterlife. He didn't know anything about this afterlife. So he wanted to know what it was about. It wasn't until Will sees the video of that guy, Pat, that's kind of, yeah. Yeah, about Pat, that it's like, okay, this is now what we understand about where you go in this afterlife. I actually enjoyed the mystery part of it because this almost came to like a mystery sort of film when they were like trying to figure out, Ooh, so yeah. what are we watching here? Watch, what yeah. is this? Yeah, yeah. Do you want to go into scenes? Have we done everyone done the characters? Uh, I really liked the character of Cooper. He had some really funny lines. He was the black guy, to Will, yeah, Ron the, Canberra. Uh, yes, Ron Canada, yes. Um, okay. what, a few times when he's talking to his recorder out loud kind of about Will, and yep. he was right there. There's some good funny scenes. <clears> I thought, again, he was a good light-hearted character to, to kind of fill in the mix. Cool. All right, so scenes. Ooh. Standout scenes. What, give us some that you really liked, Hater. The, the opening scene for me was fantastic. I think for many reasons. I mean, one, you've got Robert Redford, the big star. He's in that big opening scene. Um, I really like, lo- in, in general, I really liked the interview that they had. I thought it was really interesting. And also just in terms of a general movie, straight away, you learn exactly what is happening in the world of this movie. They tell you, you know, there is an afterlife. People are committing suicide. So you're... You, you, you're two minutes in, I've seen, I've seen the big star and I know exactly what is going on in the world of this movie. And then the guy shoots himself and you're like, wow, this is intense. I am fully in. So yeah, th- that, that opening scene really got me in. Yeah, I had that too because it explained like the plot device of the afterlife and you see the guy shoot himself. It literally told you everything you need to know about the premise for the film. And Straight the, away, you knew what was going on. The concept is just so interesting on its own. Yeah. That's the thing. Mm. All right, what else? Keep going. <laughs> Keep going. Yeah, okay. I've got a page of this. Right. I, I liked when Mill, when Will meets Isla on the ferry. Um, I mean, it, it starts off pretty funny when he offers her the vertigo pills and she's like, what, you think I'm just going to take pills from some stranger and then takes them? But then I really like the more in-depth discussion of them both telling each other if they believe in the discovery and what, what they believe about the discovery. I thought that was really interesting And as at well. that point, you obviously don't know that Will is... Um, exactly, you don't, yeah. So, yeah, that, that was really interesting You know what, me. this, at the time, I've told you how I took me a while to get into this film. Mm. That was... The, that's the only scene that I had that I didn't like in the film because there was... 
complete lack of chemistry between mm. um, Siegel and Mooney on the boat. But after watching the end, I know why. It's you know why it's there, yeah. Yeah. I, I, yeah. So I shouldn't even say it, but at the time, no, no, watching, well, that, well, yeah, watching yeah, that for the first yeah. time, I was like, Ugh, no, yeah, like yeah. what are you guys doing? Yeah, because uh, it wasn't great chemistry. I, 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 in my bad things, I talk about that, but it wasn't great chemistry, but I still loved what they were talking about. Yeah, yeah. The one part in that scene that I really liked was there was that clock counter in the background, the suicide. Like all yeah, the counters everywhere. Yeah, yeah. Exactly. So I've liked that. And then I thought, okay, if I go back and watch again, I want to check the counts on each of them. I thought the exact same thing. To work out, thing. Work out oh, okay. where they are. Yeah, yeah. And where they are in the timeline of what's going on and what's, yeah. Oh, yeah. I didn't work. think of that. Because like, so which, because there was in the morgue, oh, it was yes. in the, it was in the morgue, it was on the wall in the morgue, it was yeah, on the wall. It was there multiple times throughout the film. So when I go back and watch, I want to oh, check out the count and work think, out. Yeah. yeah. I'm pretty sure the story that we watch in this film is one story, though. Because I know they go back when, when he meets her again at the end when he dies. Yep. And she's like, oh, you've done this before and before and before. I don't think that there is... Oh, yeah, I, there's I no agree. There's no interlapping timelines. Yeah. The, fir- the first hour and a half is all one story. It's all one story. I believe, yes. Really? I, I think I believe, so. yeah. Because that was... Because remember, she's like, the first time you didn't even get off the boat, the second mm-hmm. time this, the third time this. Yeah. I yeah. think that was just one story that got yeah. him the closest. Um, I agree. And that was the only story that got him to being able to use that machine that his dad had created to send him back there. And that's the only reason that he could communicate with her the way he did, because he was half dead. Yep. And he was basically just like, hang on, what's going on here? I know you. But mm. every other time when you actually die, he doesn't know her. Yeah. Okay. But that's a good point. I, I want to see it anyway, just to see. Yeah, just to see. But keep, yeah, yeah, keep going. I, I, that's what I think. I yeah. think you're wrong. Yeah, no, 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 that makes sense. <laughs> yeah, keep going. Keep going. Um, so the first scene when Toby, um, you see Jesse Plummer for the first time, he picks up Will and they're driving back to the house. I really like that conversation, <laughs> and especially just after seeing what MJ said, the chemistry, which I don't think was great between Jason Siegel and Rooney Mara, and then I really like the chemistry in that car between Jason Siegel and Jesse Plemons. So I really like that scene of them driving to the car. I liked driving the, to the house. I liked the lead up to that as well, where they're waiting in that car park for the cars. Yeah. It just mm. showed you that isolation of where they are. Dead. Yeah, it was, yeah. yeah, it was really good. Yeah. The, um, so when Thomas gives the, the, I guess the questionnaire, the interview to Isla, some really interesting questions he asks and some really interesting answers, um, that Isla gives. I really enjoyed that scene, especially things like how she was, she was saying after a loss, she hated like her coffee table and her fridge and things like that. I was really intrigued by that. Uh, what of her answers? What did he use the questions for? Like apart from deciding whether he thought they could just, stay. Yeah, in. I guess, I, I guess that, that's more feeding to his ego. He learns about this person. He decides where they can that's stay. I don't see how those questions really can relate to like, what was the machine from our, that these people from, our, respe- from our audience perspective, I reckon it's just a way to learn more. That was yeah, yeah, to, to, to learn, learn more about it. About it. Yeah. But there was like, which I did and, and, and was course, good. Cause, cause you allude to the fact that she's lost someone. Yeah. I think when you're first watching that, I, you assume it's a boyfriend and you already know why she's a bit, Different, she's a bit strange. Yeah, yeah. because they're hooked up to a machine. Yeah, it's a question machine. Really. She is. Yes, yes she because is. that's the so machine in, in like, credit yeah. scene where he's playing the guitar. Ah, uh, okay. Yeah. Oh, okay. Yeah. yeah. Same. Okay. Keep going. Yeah. Um, I'm going in chronicle order. I think so. The next one was they're still in a court scene. <clears throat> was very funny. I thought from that was pretty funny. From Will and Isla, you know, they're picking out the corpse to to Toby describing his missing friend to the workers. Like, hey, we haven't even got to the bottom half of his yeah, body yet. I I, I I enjoyed that that whole sequence again because it was quite a serious film, and then you got a bit of you know lighthearted there to break it up. I, I really enjoyed that scene as well. That's you I've didn't got, like I, it. That was one part that got to me. So yeah. um, they're in the car on the way, and that's where Toby and um, Isla are talking about she's trying to find out more about how their mum died yeah yeah so to me when they're driving I'm like oh, the two of them are just going and then they rock up to the morgue and then all of a sudden um, he's there as well yeah that's right I was who, like who Will 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 was there as well to yeah, help him he, he was in the back yeah I, I get like I get that on the way when they're on oh, the okay, way back sorry, on yeah, the way there I'm like I just thought it was those two oh, okay, because he wasn't okay. there and yeah. I, they got there and as soon as like oh Will's here to help I'm like hang on how did he get there and that just did, sort of did he drive separately? I'm pretty sure they you that assume they, that he's in the Ute because I'm, I'm, on the I'm, way back he's I'm, in the Ute with. I'm pretty sure they show you show him you. in the back of the Ute. Okay. On, on the way there, yeah, it's only about a, a half a second. Like they show him back of the Ute, kind of looking kind of sad, and then it goes to the Jesse Plemons pulling out his earbud and going, "Oh, sorry, am I being rude?" But I'm pretty sure they show you 
Will in the back of the Ute. I just thought it was a nice isolated scene between the two. It could have been good. Yeah, and I was like, hang on, could have been rocks up. Because he's the one that said, like, I heard about your mum. Oh yeah, she committed suicide. He's like, whoa. Because you didn't, you didn't know that. Yeah, no, no, you just no. knew she was dead. Yeah, exactly. And this was the one stage of the movie where I don't know why or what it was. That, and I was going, I remember the poster for this film, and the poster had the character of Will with the machine hooked to his head. Yeah. So from that stage onwards, I'm like, I know he's going to go under that machine at some stage. Mm. And that I don't know if that's why that Which scene's got. Wasn't to be. a good poster. No, when you think about it, because it was that was like right at the right end, and it's yeah. like, oh, because again, yeah, I thought I'm like, I, I saw that. That was that. I don't know why it was that. And during the movie, it's yeah. like. At what point does he put those things on? Or was that for the poster maybe? But looking back... Because I saw the poster when I clicked on it or something. I've seen the poster. Yeah. But I didn't put two and two together that he would necessarily go under there. I think it's just showing, this is our star. This is our equipment. Yeah. That's that's fair enough, yeah. I know that was just in my head. But it's it's a risky thing. That was like one thing, yeah. Sorry, keep keep going here. Um, The first scene in the bunk beds with Will and Iowa, I thought was fantastic where Will is telling the story of how his mum committed suicide. It's really emotional. And it, in fact, just their whole conversation in that bunk bed is a really good emotional scene. I really I like the holding really hand scene. That was funny. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, this is a lot better for you. Than <laughs> yeah, because his yeah. arms are like up. Yeah. I agree with you, man. That was, that, that was, was the first time scene. that the real philosophical conversations came in that I really loved. Yeah. Well, they're talking about... Um, life and taking someone's spot and with mm. the suicide and the animals afterlife and yeah that's when you realize animals. that they actually yeah. have a lot more in common than they first thought yeah um so um i think because she because he said everything familiar suddenly seemed unrecognizable mm. and that goes back to when she said that about yeah the she doesn't like the coffee, coffee table, table and stuff. stuff like that yeah um but it also just highlighted the fact that they're just really sad people. <laughs> yeah. But I like that they they sort of had each other at that point. Mm. That was that was a turning point. I agree with you there. Yeah. When Will first watches that video of Pat, so Dude, that, now you're in my order. So <laughs> that's so that's, so that's when I kind of went, oh holy shit, what's happening here? Yeah. Where, this movie has now turned. I'm really ex- like I've always, I was already liking this movie. Now we've seen this. Oh, where are we going now? I'm really excited. That left me wanting more. Yeah. I needed to see more. Yeah. Um, and then the returning of Pat's corpse was a very funny scene. So I didn't uh, up until up until um, they make out in the car. Yeah, which I didn't I th- like. I, thought, I knew you wouldn't like that, Jesse. No, I no, because no, I got the relationship that was building. Like I got that there was, was going to be some. I thought, I thought, some I thought, I thought at that somewhere. point it was a bit forced. This wasn't. I didn't. I didn't. I, I didn't think that were. That was meant to that be at that stage. That was yeah. meant to be funny. That scene. Yeah. It was meant to be funny with them sitting in the car making the call in. Did not land. So I, I thought it was funny. Even before that, where they, where she's like, "Oh, do I just leave it here?" Yeah. It's like, "Oh, um, it's hard." To, like, something like maybe. Yeah, it's, it's, a it's hard to believe this is the first time I've returned a corpse. Like, I, I, I found that funny. I, I enjoyed I just, that. I, I don't know. Maybe it's because it's a dead body, but it just didn't. Maybe. Land. Yeah. And compared to I, the I rest, find dead body, dead body's funny. Maybe know. if you're thinking like scary movie or something where the, every joke is about yeah stupid so, stuff. Yeah. This the way this film was going to have like a line like that, and then I was like, yeah. No. No, 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 I thought it was fair fine. enough. I thought yeah. it was fine, and it was light and true to character enough. But I agree. Like the kiss felt a bit forced. It felt forced to me. I but didn't to, like it. But to me, I was also like, let's not hide behind the fact that this film is about the relationship between these two people, mm, and yeah. it had to happen. At it some wasn't stage. like a romance for the sake of a romance to that point. Yeah. So I, I was okay with it. Yeah, it had to like there had to be some sort of physical connection between the two at some stage because we've already seen the hands holding like we spoke yeah. about before yeah so then it need to happen but i don't know whether that was the right moment well they shacked up right afterwards didn't they yeah oh well they got cut in by um yeah. toby walks <laughs> like just, what are you doing yeah <laughs> <laughs> um my, so my next one was when will and iowa visit pat's sister and um she's and like then they're asking about it and then again what we talk about when they're seeing the video again it steps up so much for me when she tells them that pat never visited the father and I was like oh but we saw that on the video okay what is going on now where is this going so again I I think that thing gave me chills like I was like oh I'm I'm excited as to what's happened here because I I thought again that just steps it up and we're going all right we're going in a new direction here I think I picked that like as it was happening yeah I was like okay so it's clearly like a what you want to do yeah. yeah Wish I got chills for that. <laughs> Keep going. Come on here. I was also enjoying this. Might have been just <laughs> I'm enjoying this. Um, oh, so I've, I've only got two left, but they're at the very end. So if any of you guys want to jump in. Before, uh, do you just go. No, no. <laughs> okay, well, the, the, the end reveal. When when uh, when Will goes back on the ferry and you see him back on the ferry and you're like, ah, oh, okay. Um, and then you're like, yeah, you're, you're wearing it. He's in a time loop. He's trying to save Isla. 
loved it. I thought the editing there that was really good with the quick short little cuts of showing mm. the the things that you're meant really to have connected good. with. Yeah. I thought you know you saw the. Oh, why is the, that conversation people? familiar and then the pills and yeah. then the bunk yeah, bed exactly. and then the, yeah. the beach like that was, yeah. I thought that was really nice yeah. 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 like that's the thing this film for me I got to a point where I'm like I need to watch I'm it really again. enjoying <laughs> this film no, no. Like, no this is a good film I'm really enjoying this film and then that happened and I'm like oh this is like a really good film <laughs> and then like the last scene which you're probably going to get to Hita if you're going in chronological oh, no, there's not much left no you go but even that but even when I get to that scene I'm like this is a really good film because I was enjoying it on one level and I'm like that's one of those films I love the dialogue. I love I love any sort of like philosophical conversations in film that make sense and I find mm-hmm. relatable. So tick tick tick, you're doing a really good job. And then that that sort of twist came. I was like, bang! Like this film's legit mm-hmm. good. And then what, that one more scene, I'm like, don't ruin the ending. Don't ruin the ending. And they didn't ruin the ending for me. They didn't make it too cheesy. You liked it? Him going to the beach. Yeah. I, I was. I guess I was just uh, when I was watching it, would have been confused onto the ferry as why Isla knew he was in a dream or, or, or how she could tell him you know you've been this before this is a memory like why she was able to do that okay because what does she say she's she's a formation of his of, of his subconscious yeah, or something like yeah Cause it, it's not like he's died and is doing this again he's kind of half, half dead yeah. that's and, the only reason yeah, she could. yeah and so she's like it's not like a new it's not like a new life that's happening it's just like hey yeah, I, I was I was a bit confused by that, and a bit like, oh, does that does this make sense to do this? I think it kind of does in the end, but like, I, I love the, the the reveal and how it all happened. But I was a bit sus on just yeah, kind of her being able to speak to him on that level. Okay, I, I, I was more talking about the scene where he dies and then he goes back to saving her son. Yeah. Okay. Um, yeah. That's where I was like, this is a nice clean finish. His purpose yeah. is to make her happy, and in that strand of his life he doesn't spend it with her mm. but that's okay because he's making Unless her happy when he turns around does he go yeah, back yeah, after yeah, her doing, yeah, does right. he maybe but it doesn't matter um i was worried it was going to be a real cheesy bad weird ending and i think they did it really really well yeah um, i didn't write that in my scenes but i was just kind of got lost no, was good, yeah. it, so. I, I, I could have done with him not even turning around and just walking off oh uh, yeah but he barely turned around like he was well, kind of like he that kind of turns around and is like oh, I kind of know you but it also could have been cool as just like he just goes it go, but it goes to that know. point where every other strand he's been like you look familiar yeah so it, that wasn't weird or a yeah. stretch for yeah no, no absolutely I, yeah I have some questions about that at okay. the end I might say for I'll, I'll say my so, so my, my last one is also the end credit song was really fitting and really good it was an Alt J song and I thought it just fitted so well as soon as the end credits popped up that song played and I went oh you know what that, that's a really great fitting end yeah. That's that's all for me. Sorry, good. Boys. I like there was a lot of those in there. Sound I'm sorry, like, sound like me when I'm talking about mercy or something. <laughs> um, I like so there was when uh, Toby picks Will up in the car and he talks about his dad being like the Wizard of Oz sort of thing. Mm. And I really liked that straight away when they get to that thing, they have that meeting at that night, and he literally his dad Thomas has this wall that he's talking to this crowd and he just goes behind the wall. It's like, like it was exactly like the Wizard of Oz, and I was like, that was really clever. It was yeah. a nice little thing. He's like, this. That's right. I was like, this is really, really good because it was yeah. It's like just talking to the group. Like, is this guy that well, no one, yeah. no one knows actually who he's at, who he actually is, or what, what he actually can do? Because at that stage, no one knew what he's working on behind this yeah. this door. You don't his, know. Yeah. Who he does. So I thought that was I really liked. Nice that. one. I thought I that was cool. I liked throughout the film these those little flashes that you got where you could see these bits of one of these timelines. You know, he had like he grabbed his head, and there'd be these like little cu- the little cuts of like him seeing the water, and throughout. And I'm like, oh, this is him having memories of when he was a kid because he had that that thing. Yeah. And then obviously, when you get towards the end, you like work out a bit more. So I liked that that slow. This is from the very start. He's like, I had an experience where I saw a boy on the beach. He's like, I don't know who it was. It could have been me. It could have been anything. And then you find out the end. The memory is him saving. But he had so. No, maybe I'll talk about now. That becomes a bit of a head. But yeah, because so he was five years old. No, how the kid? So the her kid was five years old. He was a kid when he had that accident. No, he was five. He was five. Okay. Yeah, he was five. Okay, so if he was five years old and he had that thing where he had the accident near death experience, and in that thing he saw the beach and he saw whatever it was that he saw. I don't know. Yeah, it's confusing. I was, I was thinking the whole time. I'm like, is her kid actually him? Yeah, like, was he going back to save himself? Yeah, that's that was me at the start. I was like, is he actually her kid? That was, and then he saves himself at the end. Oh geez, I like that. Ooh, but that, that yeah. was like towards the end. That's the thing. I sat there and I go, okay, I'm so confused because he was talking about his water experience. He'd go back to the water and sit at the beach when he was a kid to look at it because this is where the accident happened. Yeah, yeah. And that's the same place where he had the kid. And yeah. then I was like, oh, 
is he the kid that is her kid that he saved? I don't Ooh, know. That's just a bit of a head spin, isn't it? I don't know. That's probably completely wrong, but that was just no, like, no. Oh, that's no. I think I, it's plausible. Yeah, yeah. definitely. Because it's a stretch, regardless. The right? whole thing's a stretch. The, right? Yeah, the whole thing's a stretch. Because otherwise, if that's not the case, they didn't explain his near death experience when he was a kid. Because you can't. He couldn't have. If he was a kid and he hadn't died yet, and he had that near death experience, why is he thinking about her kid? Why is he thinking about that memory? That memory where yeah. he would go back to. Yeah, because unless he died when he was a kid, I get, I guess all the things. Like, why, yeah. why did he go back to that point? It's a strand of his. Well, he went back to that point at the end because he wanted to make Isla happy, so she didn't. She so she never lost her kid. But is that because? But he's seeing that in that strand of reality. Yeah, and, because because don't you always go back to your biggest regret? So if he if he saved her, and he died, and like he dies, like. He doesn't know at that point. Like, how did yeah, exactly. That's because because they what? keep yeah. saying the loop goes back to the yeah. boat. He goes back to the boat. So for him yeah. to go back to that scene where he saves her kid yeah. means he goes prior to the boat. He an at, at, before he's met her. So how does he know yeah. about so, that? So, so if what, he goes back and saves a kid, he never would have met her. Yeah. Why is that a regret from him to not to have not saved her kid when he hasn't even met her yet? Yes, because he wouldn't have met her. But I guess it confused that's, me a bit. It's almost like a second because they're old. That's a different. It's like so he's gone game. back to the boat. <laughs> He's gone back to the boat. Multiple ride. times, though. Yeah, yeah no, but, yeah, by, but by the end, yeah. he's gone back to the boat and met her and um, then found out this is... No, no, you you keep doing this right. Hang on, I've got it, I've got it clear in my head now. <laughs> so he keeps going back to the boat every time and then the time that he actually goes back and gets to... And she explains to him, you keep going back to this point. He understands, okay, I keep going back to this point and getting nowhere with it. So when he dies that time... He goes back even further in time. So his main goal is to make her happy and keep her happy. So rather than going back to the point of him physically keeping her safe and happy, he goes back even further so she doesn't get depressed yep. for losing her son. And then it kind of clears it all from there. Okay. Because yep. he's going back in time with the knowledge of that boat experience that um, yep, it I've... doesn't work that way. He knows that, so then he dies then, and he goes back even further. So the experiencing the the experience that we're watching isn't the first time he gets on the boat because obviously she Correct. she kills herself Correct. in the water and he goes back to save her and prevent her from doing that. So I, that makes hundred percent sense. Yeah, it still doesn't explain. It doesn't why explain he when he the kid, had the kid when, when he's a kid. kid. Mm. Yeah. You're right. It doesn't. Yeah, just one of those movie things. <laughs> I agree. Now there's more to it. Unless I, I want to unpack. That. Unless he goes all the way back to when he was a kid. And then lives his whole life because he goes back. To, oh, I don't know. I don't know. Anyway, yeah, we need to move on. Good, yeah. good discussion. But yeah, it, it discussion. gives you heaps to think about. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I like the shooting of um, Isla at mm. the end because I thought through that editing that it was Toby. I said this is a great example of a bait and switch. Yep. Yep. Really? I, I, yeah, I, I, I thought, the, I thought yeah. the exact same thing. Because oh, you've know. seen that scene with Toby Pryor and then you come out and the camera goes straight on Toby. exactly yeah. right. And you see Toby yeah. go around the back yeah. and just sort of nick off on his own. Yeah, and then the camera's just on him by him. You hear the gunshot and the yeah. camera's on him straight like, oh, he's yep. killed her. And then you see Lacey, it was the one that didn't. I really liked that. I thought that was really well done, really clever. So but when even when Lacey's name is called, I thought Lacey, and she's holding the gun, I thought she'd killed Thomas. That's yeah. the thing. Like, yeah, I was the had, last yeah, person I expected. Thought. So yeah. it was just like this bait and switch, bait and switch. It's like, oh, no, it's not Toby. Oh, my God, it's Thomas. No, it's not Thomas. I'm like, who the hell did she shoot? Yeah, yeah. I thought it was a shock. Mm. I like I wrote shock. Yeah, that was a really clever scene. Because you're right, the scene before that, Toby's all like, oh, Ripped I want up, it. Yeah. yeah. And then he walks specifically around the back. Uh, yeah, and then I, I really like the scene at the end where he saves the kid out of the water. Yeah. The only scene that I had that you guys didn't have, and I had about eight, so well done. Yeah, I had, yeah. But I liked that, and I liked this prior to knowing that Lacey shot um, Isla. I liked the discussion that Lacey and Cooper were having um, about murder. Because yeah, they, yeah, they yeah. were talking, because I was thinking this the whole time. Like, if you know that someone... Is in pain or... Or no, if you know that there's an afterlife, and if you kill someone, they're not going to a bad place... People are just going to start killing people. Like they're just going to do it. Like you're Get annoying me in this life. life. Yeah. But yeah. Go have oh, it's not that big a deal. You're going somewhere good. Yeah, so. true. I was thinking that as well the whole time. And then obviously, at the end, Lacey shoots her and talks about relocating. Yeah, her. it didn't kill her. She re- I re- relocated, relocated her. her. Yeah. yeah. So, but it was really good. They set that up at the start. I wasn't even expecting it to and, come back. And that sort of showed, and sort of almost goes back to that cold thing. That's how indoctrinated um, Lacey was with this whole idea. Yeah. Because she's she's killed someone. Doesn't 
feel the repercussions of killing someone because yeah. exactly and I can understand that they set that up well enough to make that like a plausible thing alright let's talk about some things we didn't like Hey, that kick us off because you've been doing, you've yeah, been well, dominating look, this. I, I didn't like Will and Iowa's romantic attraction. I felt it. I think it felt forced. So obviously, at, at the end, Joanne kind of was all about you know him trying to save her. But all throughout the movie, I just I, I didn't think that there was enough there for me to believe that they were that you know they were attracted to each other. That's like the core of the movie, though. If you don't like that, hang on, you're yeah. not talking about on an emotional level, though. Because they did a great job of doing. Oh, they did they talking about. I mean, uh, maybe it was more focused on on that kiss in the car and stuff. I just didn't feel like it fitted for those for those two there. I I, I wanted more from them. Like it, this film is he, their relationship. Yeah, yeah I know. He, he, that's, yeah, he doesn't I, he doesn't go back to do any of this if that's not there. So. Yeah, I know. But that's why, that's why I, I I wanted more for it. I, I just felt like it was maybe that they rushed over it too much. I, I wanted more of them together. Like actual mm. scenes on the screen. Yeah, 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 yeah. That's what I'm talking okay. about. Yeah. What about like he drives her to the thing and they sit in the car on the lookout and then takes her to all the meetings with the dad. They do the morgue thing together. They do heaps together. That's the reason yeah, this but... film is good. <laughs> <laughs> See, I, I thought it was good for the other for other reasons. What, what what reasons? Oh, just all the other stuff about about um, Will and the afterlife and, and Thomas and all that. Like, yeah, they're they're kind of the mm. yeah the, the other one wasn't a big one for me in liking this. So did you mm. do you reckon if they recast her as someone better that the same scenes would have worked as well or not really? Possibly, I thought Rudy Mara was, really Mara was pretty good. Yeah, yeah I'd, no, I don't know. No, I just, just didn't sit right. Uh, yeah, it just. I mean, maybe it was Jason Segel and, and Rudy yeah, Mara together. That's what I thought you were saying. Yeah, yeah so yeah. that 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 very much well could be. I just yeah, just it was something about those two just didn't yeah. fully work. So that emotional connection was so strong that mm-hmm. you couldn't past it. Yeah. All right. What else? Um, oh, I think Emily might have mentioned it before the scene where Thomas calls out Lacey in front of everyone and kind of like tells her, you know, why'd you tell all these people about this machine that wasn't working? And then he throws her out like it could have been done in private, not humiliate her in front of everyone. It, that was an important scene for his character. Though. Yeah, that's he's the like, wizard. Yeah, yeah. He should do it in front of everyone. He's, I, uh, that's I did, yeah, I didn't like him calling her out like that or in public and like, my mate, just, no, it wasn't a nice thing to do. Let's <laughs> privately do that. Um, oh, the only one other one for me then was um, so so when Will and Toby watch their father's regret when he sees his wife and he um, he kind of tells her now come back down and prevents that suicide so obviously like it, 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 it's a really good scene and like kind of the, the effect of the visual is kind of because of what they're seeing but the video was shaking so much my eyes started hurting watching it that it was it was just shaking so I'm sitting there going oh my god this is really hurting my eyes please stop so it, it was a great scene in terms of the message what was showing it but just don't shake the. Just don't shake it as much. My <laughs> eyes are killing me watching that. <laughs> All right. I didn't have anything. Yeah, I I didn't like the, I didn't like the imagery of the the cult tour stuff. I didn't like the coloured tracksuits. Yeah, true. I just thought, you don't really need to like try and. Yeah, why did they that? Do that? Because if you want to be in, you're in. Yeah, mm. it wasn't like the. And they had like scenes of them meditating. There's one scene where Will walks past and they're like sitting there praying and stuff. Well, like, Isla and Will didn't wear outfits either. And I Isla that, did. Oh, Isla did at Isla one did point. At yeah, one point, yeah. yeah Will refused to. What was she wearing? What color? Because uh, she asked that question. What's this letter mean on my? Uh, she yeah, didn't she? On my, yeah. She was outfit. definitely wearing something. Yeah, yeah you're right. So, yeah, she right. did. Mm. But yeah, I, I don't know. I just didn't add to the plot of the story. It was like if you, yeah, like you said, if you're there, you're there to be a part and help. Especially out. because they were different colors as well. Yeah, like maybe if the, all the workers there were wearing one color jumpsuit, it's like, hey, yeah, these guys are the yeah, workers. Like, it didn't say they're all wearing different ones. This, yeah, it's like, kind of, can... what did they mean? Yeah, yeah, if you notice with that scene where Thomas kicked out Lacey, they were sitting in the rows of their the colors. colors. Oh, well, they didn't notice yeah. that. No. Yeah, I don't know if it you're gonna if something. you're gonna include something that's that visual and that stands out that much, it needs a bit more explanation probably. rather than just saying Pro- we probably missed it. It's a cult. Yeah, probably. Yeah, I need to watch it. And I also, this I, I also didn't like the scene where they're trying to work out who this Pat Phillips guy is, and they you know worked out oh the car models are prior to this and that, and then they're just in this big records room, and it's just like oh so because of this at least me one person bang and like convenient. they worked it out pretty convenient. quickly, didn't they? Convenient. They worked it out pretty quickly, <laughs> very convenient. Yeah, but you needed convenience yeah. in that part of the story. Yeah. <laughs> like I enjoyed the mystery side of it. I really did. It started to me to feel a little bit like the Ghost Rider. Um, mainly because of like the the same sort of dreary vibe and trying to solve a story. Um, Pierce Brosnan, um, yeah, Pierce Brosnan and Ewan McGregor. Yep, it's a good movie. Yeah. Um, but like that part of the story, I didn't want them to spend too much time cutting it down to like six different people and having to check them all out. Like yeah, I was true. fine with that. All right. So, what was, what was what were some of the themes in this? Well, my big one was love. Um, <laughs> I don't know how that down. 
Uh, it, it's the, I totally agree. It's the driving emotion behind life. I, it's, it's arguably the deepest emotion that we feel, and the fact that they go into this film and explore it is really cool. But um, the, it's the only emotion that gives these characters any kind of drive and direction. I think Will was really just existing before he met Isla. Isla wanted to end her life before she sort of met Will. People are going back to that one moment in their life that they wanted to change, and it's always righting a wrong with a loved one. And just this whole film is all about love. I like that lead on to that bit as well. It's like making things right as well, yeah. overcoming regret. But I love, really like that love. Like, yeah. I didn't, didn't even, this, this didn't even think about, That's why when yeah, you said I didn't about, like their relationship, I'm like, this yeah. film is about love. <laughs> it was obviously talking about the afterlife and this theme of like, yeah, does absolutely. the afterlife exist? Suicide and yes. getting there and being better off if you're in different places. Having that second chance or third chance or fourth yeah, chance. Just, you know, keep going. Keep yeah. going. Like your regrets and things like that. They, they top, touched on it a little bit, like this idea of like proof and needing to be definitive. They kept talking about this. You great, know, yeah. great lines. Mm. Yeah, you need to... Yeah. What, what, like proof if, if be I want to believe in this, yeah. and that leads on a little bit to about like faith and stuff, because yeah. Thomas clearly says, you know, I don't believe in faith, so yeah, you need this evidence to be yeah. um, down pat. Bit of an honour kind of responsibility too, like was, was Thomas responsible for all these people committing suicide? Yeah. The... Uh, you know, and who has the right to change people's lives? Like, so the discovery mm. change that Will stops Isla from drowning. Like, do who yeah. has who has this moral yeah, exactly. compass yeah. to decide who can do what? Yeah. So another theme for that is is helping others, and I think the ending is all about it because it uses Will as a vehicle to highlight how important that is. But the big sense of satisfaction he has on the beach is the culmination of a number of loops or tangents that he's been on, basically to get to that point. And I love that that culminated with his initial story about seeing the boy on the beach and his own near-death experience. But all of this is to help someone else. It's got nothing to do with him and righting a wrong in his life. He just wants to make someone else happy. I agree. And it's, well, I almost say that in Thomas a little bit too because he may, he says something at the end of the line when um, the chick's got the gun and he says something about you know um, the importance of family. And talks about the importance of family, and we've seen the same prior. He unfolds that photo with the mum in it and that sort of stuff. So that leads in as well that, like you know, Thomas is finally acknowledging that he needs to do stuff for other people as well, rather than yeah. Well, yeah, him, his mum, the, the wife dying as well. It, it, it's affected his kids. Yeah, and mm. it's probably been the reason why Will's left and all yeah. that kind of stuff. Yeah, and there was like another another one of those great lines. It was like searching for meaning, not creating it, and lying to ourselves. Mm-hmm. It's like ah, oh. even though that even though Will was creating this whole. Everything he was doing. Oh, like, yeah, really. yeah, what is, yeah, no, I've just. Someone's great. Reality and fantasy are mutually exclusive. Yeah. Mm-hmm. <laughs> just, yeah. No, love it. All right. Are we ready to talk about what we took away from this film? I think so. I thought it was really well paced. So, hour 42, probably one of the longer ones. I feel like we do a lot kind of around that 90 minute mark. I, I thought, I, so I watched it twice, I kind of flew through it both times. I didn't really think there was too many down points where I was kind of like oh what's going on here let's move back to other things I thought it was a really well paced film it's a big rap this is like the modern day eternal sunshine of the spotless mind <laughs> it's, and that reminds the scene on the train I was like on the boat I was like oh this is massive like eternal sunshine of the spotless mind yeah I just couldn't shake that the whole time I was watching it and that's a phenomenal movie yeah but yeah literally you feel that on the boat like you do you, yeah you, do, you feel that and even movie. just those like and not that Eternal Except, Sunshine is about realities or no. different realities but it's about you know, it's kind of like that I just couldn't it, it was so similar in so many ways and it was great in so many ways as well Sim- similar to what Heath was saying with the, the pace like the, I thought the transitions throughout were really good the fades like there were lots of fades to black or fades to that bright white and I thought that really paced the film really well as well mm-hmm. and I think this would have been good at the, the cinemas been awesome at the cinemas I would have paid to see this at the movies yeah, yeah. I would like to see this in movies I reckon I would have given an extra half star like <laughs> <laughs> like sometimes you just yeah. enjoy things differently and enjoy them more than you sit at home. Yeah. I think anyway. All right, so IMDb. We look at IMDb. If we look up anyone, who did we look up in this to see if we knew anyone? I looked up Ron Canada, who played Cooper. Oh yeah. Couldn't understand why, and I he's the judge in Ted Two, and I think no. that's what I remember him from. He's also in Wedding Crashes, but I don't know. He's just familiar. Hmm. Yeah. I didn't jump on. No, I didn't at all. I didn't. No. Didn't go on. All right, look, questions. What, have we got any questions? We've looked at a few of these already, I guess. Well, my, I guess I had, a, I didn't really have a question, but now I do. Is to you know we, we all really like this movie. Why didn't critics like it? 
What do we think? Why didn't... I mean, what, what, what do we say in Rotten Tomatoes? 45%? I didn't... To be honest, I didn't read any reviews. I'd like yeah, to read, read a few of them just, and find out what they didn't yeah, like. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm not sure why critics just didn't like this film. It's a good point. Uh, I don't know. Yeah, I don't yeah. know. I don't know. No, I don't know, yeah. The, the post-credit scene, I want to talk about it. So you got this post-credit scene where Toby's got his guitar. I was working so hard. I'm like, all right, what are you trying to tell me? I... Okay. <laughs> So he's got the guitar, the machine behind him is that one that they hook up for the questionnaire and the room's empty. There's no one in that room. So does that mean that Thomas has changed enough in his life to go back and, and this is a different thread where there's no need for anyone to be working there because he's able to convince all these people that there's no need to, to try and attempt suicide because the only reason they were there was because they attempted suicide to be in his thing. So if that room is now empty, there's no one working there. So if no one's there, that means Thomas hasn't had to save anyone because he's no longer promoted this idea. It's better than any theory that I could have come up with. I thought he was just playing guitar. Maybe so, I thought but that. he like strums it and that's it, isn't it? He like he barely plays it. Yeah. I, I like that idea. They wouldn't put it in there for no reason. It's good, I just, it's, I there's got to be a reason why. It's I guess the know. fact that it was empty. It would have been almost good if they like had chairs like packed up on each other or something like that to make it clear that no one no was, was going to be there. Or I, yeah, I just don't understand why. That, that fits there. in really nicely. That's mm. like a real happy ending kind of vibe. Do animals have an afterlife? <laughs> <laughs> Why wouldn't they? Like yeah. that's the thing. Like, yes. Yeah. I Why don't not? know. Is it a? You have to perform on some sort of cerebral level to. Yeah. If, if you haven't seen this film, you wouldn't understand that. So you need to watch this film if you haven't. Um, what was the appeal? And we kind of talked about this. What was the appeal of suicide initially? Why do people start? Where, where do people think they, they're going when they were doing it initially? Someone better, they get to. I guess. Better, what, no one. I, I guess it's because not people wouldn't be happy with their own lives. They figure that that it. I'm not sure what it is, but it's got to be better than this kind of thing. So I guess the reason that people would people would probably take their lives nowadays is because they think that on an extreme level. So yeah. you're saying even if you don't even get to that extreme point. Yeah, it's kind of hard. I, 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 I guess people who are even considering it, yeah. if they know there is something else, because There's less reason. Yeah, to, to yeah, it's it. kind of like, oh, you know, I was kind of thinking about it, thinking not about it. Now that I know there's something more, why not do it? I'm not happy here. Why not do it and, okay. and see? Yeah, I just remember thinking like, we, we still don't know where you're yeah. going. Like, I mean, you know, we talk about it, there's a lot of people that suffer from from mental illnesses and things like that. So I think in this world, those people that suffer from it that, that aren't at that point yet will we'll still go. Hey, this could be a good way to get out of it. People and, that don't pull themselves something. up. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah, you know, it could it could be something better. And if you're not happy, I'm going to take that chance. That's a good response. Yeah. Hmm. The so you were supposed to hate Thomas, like we spoke about before. You weren't supposed to like him. Not hate him, but I don't think hate him. He was. Yeah. He wasn't a great character. I don't think. So wasn't a great. Why person, did person. so great person probably? I didn't why mean. did he decide? Yeah. If he wasn't a great person, why did he decide to go and do all this by himself, isolated, to protect? He didn't mean. Wasn't doesn't that show you that some somewhere inside him he wants to protect the world from what he's trying to describe? Uh, I think he's a bit of an egomaniac. I think if I think, he was an egomaniac, why wouldn't he be on the news doing these I interviews think all the time? Maybe True. because he because his ultimate motivation was because of his guilt on his wife's suicide, and maybe he didn't want people to know that that was his motivation. Like they didn't want him to know that you know he's doing all this because he caused his wife to kill himself. Like he wanted to be like, I'm True. a scientist. I'm trying to just do this big discovery. And so no one can know my hidden meaning of really I'm, I'm broken because I'm, I'm the reason my wife killed herself. So, so why do that interview in the first place and why share your, your discovery of the afterlife with anyone if it's you're a, just doing it for yourself? It's almost motivation. a combination of both, but I don't think you can discount the fact that he's just smart enough to do it on his own. Mm. So yeah. He didn't need the help. So he could, and he could work in yeah. those conditions better. Okay, I've got another question. Yeah. So yeah. there's a scene where Isla uh, will take her to the beach, and he sit, they sit in the car, and he says, "You know, this is where I used to be as a kid." So that sort of makes reference to they grew up there when they were kids. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. I believe Definitely. so. So why do they make such a big deal about no phones, no connection? Because the FBI are after us when they get there. Surely the FBI would be like, "Oh, they lived on this island when they were kids." On the island, but they obviously had only recently moved to that complex. But yeah. if they grew up there and that's where they were in kids, surely that'd be one of the first. Good point. Places yeah, they probably could have found it easier. Yeah, yeah. I was just that annoyed. Well, there's no real reason to arrest him. Though. That's yeah, I'm not sure why. No, no, exactly. Why would the why would the FBI be after them? Because they because they hadn't been found in a while, and they will probably just yeah. to check up on him. I don't know. Yeah, okay. yeah. I don't know. That was just one line. Really. Like, yeah. really. Yeah. Yeah. All right. I've, is there anyone got anything else I want to ask? No, I don't. All right. Let's wrap this up. Let's. 
we always give our films a rating out of five and then uh, give an average. Heater, kicks off. So, right, mate. So, yeah, I really enjoyed this movie. It, it had me in from the start and I thought it was paced really well and I was engaged the whole way through. The story was really interesting um, and I, I liked a lot of the characters. It, it was a good, solid movie. I give it three and a half out of five. Good. MJ? Um, yeah, from my perspective, as I said, I really need to watch this again. I started off on the wrong path and when I finally got going with what the film was trying to tell me, I gained traction really quickly. An interesting concept, concept but overshadowed by fascinating characters and the depths of emotions looking to find meaning in what is basically a dystopian world. I loved it and I'd probably love it even more if I watched it again. Four stars. All right, so I'm the same. Thoroughly enjoyed the film. I didn't want it to stop. I was hooked. I thought the, the twist played out really well. And although there are a couple of things that sort of confuse me, like a, and maybe it's just I need to watch it again, and that's what I've said here. I highly recommend it, and I do want to watch it again. So I'm giving it a four out of five as well. I could definitely see myself giving this a four and a half if I watched it again. Watch it again. I really could. This is great. All right, what does that give us as an average? Give us a 3.83 out of five. That's pretty high. Good very score. High. Very puts, score. It, puts it up there very high on our list of yeah. averages. That'd be definitely. top two, top three. Yeah, definitely. definitely. All right, so... We have social media. We have Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We are at Flix Forum. We post on there with our question of the week. This week, the question is, should Thomas feel responsible for all the deaths? Ooh, good question. Should he? I don't know. I don't think he would, but I, should he? <laughs> You'd have to be a big man not to. Yeah. Like, yeah. you shouldn't. I don't think you should be respons- feel responsible for all of them. I don't think you should, mm. but it'd be hard not to. Yeah. So if you haven't subscribed, please do subscribe. It means heaps to us. Five-star rating if you can. Next week on our show, we're looking at the 2017 comedy Win It All. It's directed by Joe Swanberg. It stars Jake Johnson, Aslan Derbers, Joe Lowe Truglio, Keegan-Michael Key, and Nikki Excitement. So please take the time to watch the film. Nikki what? Nikki Excitement. Excitement. Yeah. Now, I looked this up twice. It was on IMDb and it was on Wikipedia, so I'm taking that as the name, Nikki Excitement. Okay. Excellent. So yeah, watch the film beforehand. This has been a good one, guys. We've gone quite long, over an hour. Over an hour. Over an hour. It's a big one. Oh, you know, it's a good discussion. Hopefully then. most people have stuck it through and, and listened and they want to join in with us. Yeah, sure. Great. All right. We will see you guys next week. Bye. Thanks, boys. <laughs>